The Butcher of Belgrade is challenging me. All right. We've got a 10 plus 5. Astrobate, welcome. The 3rd of June, 2022. Alright, we've got Sumahar challenging 10 plus 5. It's 7 plus 5 minimum for today's challenges. Rapid, slow, and serious chess here. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Friday, fantastic Friday, let's do it. Alright. 10 plus 5, our first challenge. Sumer has two victories. That's enough now. It's time to take take him extra seriously <clears throat> the way I used to against Arsenal fan. When you beat me too many times, he learned his lesson. Got to beat him down while they while they're still young. All right. I think we're going to go with the G6 today. He didn't react well to this last time. He has his set routine. Now I've played I've played the Jinji Indian. I'm not necessarily going to do that here. I think we're going to do our, our routine. There is the move knight, I'm um, sorry, d6. Knight d6 is too like a king's Indian. So we say knight, knight c6. He says you know what you want, how to, how do you get there? Push. You can only push me so far, man. Push to d5. Not really characteristic move for him. Mr. Coffee subscribing. 55 months. Only. Threatening to trap my knight. Not nice. Niles, welcome. So, interesting thing happened last night. After all this time, I don't know how long it's been, Mr. Coffee. Um... Uber driver officially revealed himself, like who he is. So he was who I thought he was at first. Um, I'm not gonna say anything unless he warrants it, but um, it's funny that, yeah, I mean, he, he, I thought he could be some different people, but, but he was the main person I, I thought he would be. But I thought he denied it at one point, you know, so I wasn't sure. That's the latest update here in Slaggy World. He's a good guy. Um, we actually played a blindfold match at the Boylston Chess Club. Uber Driver is the only person I've ever played a, a blindfold match against. All right. We're both alumni of Boston University. So it was funny that he um, he graduated the spring before I started my first semester at Boston University. Latest development here: reveal of Uber driver, Uber driver identity. All right, he's a good guy. Countering the bird. How do you counter the bird? What are bird predators and birds natural predators? Dude, you played H3. Just pawn moves. Now, when did Uber drivers start watching my stream? Like, much later than you, probably. Mr. Coffee with the morning sarcasm. What time is it there? 5 a.m. They get up early in the Navy. What are you doing up so early, anyway? Feed the cats. Meow. All right.
Gotta be careful with Sumer. Sumatra. How do I bring my knight out? I actually have knight f6, knight h5, knight g3 in some positions. Everybody's here early. Friday morning. All right. I'm not feeling it yet. We're gonna need some warm up. Maybe I could put my other knight on d7. No need to apologize. There's no expectations for people to be present for the analysis stream. Lots of people just watch the stream later. That's perfectly acceptable. Nice to see so many bodies here early. Whoa. E5. Wow, that's insane. That's officially insane. I can't get over that Sumer is only 1800 in blitz. That just that's unbelievable. He has a bad score, but he's actually almost never an easy game. See this a lot with people. It's a lot of pawn moves. Normally he doesn't make so many pawn moves like this. Overextended, what's that? Yes, it's a possibility. I've, I've never really characteristically seen him like pushing so many pawns before. Ooh, Sean Pinto. You're um, pushing the envelope here on a Friday morning. Not good. Not good. B4. We don't like that. People make sarcastic remarks. When I'm still half asleep. Damn, that's a lot of pawn moves. It's weird, man. I mean, he doesn't normally push this many pawns. People have a style, you know? Yeah, I would say, like, anonymous people, especially like you, are very suspicious. At least Sumer is kind of... He's got more of a footprint. Like, we have a feeling we have an idea who he really is. All right, anonymous players are a dime a dozen, but Sumahara is not really anonymous. <clears throat> Knight d7, that's a lot of pawn moves. Why all the pawn moves, man?
Why all the pawn moves? Yeah, I'm actually a general manager of a toy shop. Uh-oh. Juicebox, speaking of sus. Juicebox is here. I think, like, Sumer is tempting me to play knight h5. I mean, knight h6 to f5. How about a tactic, kids? If I play knight f5, I'm threatening knight g3, so he'll probably respond with pawn takes pawn. That's the problem. Isn't it? No. He can't. Knight f5, queen f2, or king f2. But if I play knight f5, let's say queen f2. Let's do it. I'm not afraid. <clears throat> Push another pawn. It's it's just that, you know, it's it's unusual to see um, Sumehar push this many pawns. He normally will play like c4, d4, e4, h3 maybe. I've never had a game with him like this. Maybe he's just experimenting with a new style, but... Um, I mean, e5 might be a good move. Feels like maybe B4 is going a little too far. I guess after E5, Knight H6, I expected him to... to start, you know, just developing his pieces. It would make sense to maybe play, like, Bishop E3. And if Knight F5, just drop it back to F2. I think that that's going a little bit too far with the B4. But who's to say? Now I'm threatening knight g3. This diagonal is is weak. If he takes, again, I'm defended on e7, so he can just drop the knight g3 for it. The knight's hanging two. I expected queen f2. But I had a move there. Actually, queen f2, you know, would leave his e5 pawn hanging. I didn't even realize. Wow, if, if queen f2, d takes e, and if g4, then knight d4, or even just take on f4, or even e4. Oh, I have a lot of moves here. Yeah, he's officially overextended. If king f2, queen b6 check. Sumihar has been declared officially overextended. Okay, he has another move. The ambulance is coming. But Sumer, thanks for taking it easy on me today. I mean, you've beaten me like twice in the last three games. Juicebox, what's up from the Southeast Asia part of Slaggy World? Help improve the stream, make a donation. <clears throat> improve our quality of life. I mean, the chat, was it like live o OTB chess? How did it go, Mr. Coffee? What? What? Bishop D2? What? Interesting. Interesting. Look at this move, Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee managed to... What? 
It went well. Arsenal was crushing me, and I somehow managed to draw. Uh huh. We're talking about. What are we talking about? Arsenal versus Mr. Coffee? Grudge match? Nice move, Bishop d2. Guarding the knight. There you have a move. England versus Hungary. Oh shit! What happened? Oh, it's tomorrow. It's here. Oh no, it's here. Oh my god. No. There'll be like millions of English football fans. Oh my god. Ugh. Puke. Best behaved football fans in the world. Oh god. And Hungary isn't good either. I mean, we have enough of our own that are problematic. Like, hooligan. No, Hungary's found some, some get around, basically. They, they managed to get around the rule by, like, you can attend the game if you're with a child or something like that. So all the hooligans have to, like, bring children with them to attend the match. They're supposed to have a reduced capacity because of their punishment or whatever. Hungary, the Hungary team. For bad behavior or whatever. They managed to get around it with some technicality. They're still going to have like 30,000 fans at the stadium. I give up, man. You're a psychopath. Seriously. Another ambulance. Yeah, this is starting to look problematic if I play this. I don't think I like this. Why can't I play knight g3? I don't know, like, why am I talking myself out of a perfectly logical move? <sighs> what? You played a training game, 30 plus 15, and had a Discord chat after? Sexy. I hope he wasn't too fresh with you. I like his English accent. It's been a while. Um, Alright, what am I doing here? What if I take on H1? My knight will get trapped subsequently. Pawn takes pawn. What happens on pawn takes pawn anyway? OMG. Dude, you're playing like a maniac. My god, dude. Have you no fear? Let's I would like to see Suma Harris rapid rating breakdown thirteen hundred games. 
let's see his rating. Other than you, he's the only person I talk to live outside the stream. It's been so long since I heard your voice, Mr. Coffee. I sort of forgot. I remember now. Yeah, you have a typical accent. You have a typical accent for that region, I think. Pretty familiar to me. Familiar to me. It's only a rook. I feel like I came close to the precipice here somehow. Maybe it's just my imagination. We have four more challenges. GM Sean Learning Chess, his other account. Niles, and then Starman. Starman is new. Starman. Don't squeeze the Starman. Wait, what was the David Bowie song? I think we were mostly the same. Bostonian. That's a pure myth. Mr. Coffee spreading myths. It sounds cool though. Man, you should have heard these people I knew in Boston. They were old money. How the old money Bostonians talk. You'd think they were from England. It's just crazy, man. You should ask Uber Driver. Uber Driver is more of a... He's got the... A little bit of the, the Boston accent going on. But the really old money people who live in, like, Beacon Hill... Oh, man. You think they got off the boat from England? It's just ridiculous. It, it, it has to be, like, faked. Alright. Um. Not resigning. No, don't resign. He defended against the mate there. Actually, this is a better move. Boom. Check. You have a check. Ching. I want to see Sumeria's rapid rating graph. See, amazingly, he has only 1,200 bullet games. He just plays fast blitz. But, um, rapid rating... He reached his rapid rating, his rapid rating peak of 2087 in March, and he's drifted down to 2044, but that's not much. But not a lot of rapid games, 1200. I would think he should be a little higher. Seems tough. Tougher to me, man. I mean, he's 1800 in rapid. You're not, why is your rapid, no, 2000, why is your rapid not more inflated? He seems strong. Ten three eight six. Ten three eight six. Ten five ten five seven five. Anything seven five. Probably our max time control should be ten five. Anything between seven and ten five. Like fifteen is a bit too long for you know giving enough people a chance to play. Eight plus six, yeah, is fourteen. You do the math. I guess he likes even numbers, man. Ten is an even number, too. Learning chess is a weird character. 
I still suspect learning chess is a is a Smurf account for someone else. Knight c3. Count Smurfula. Whatever happened to chess Smurf? D5 is principled. I bet Uber Driver would like this. The truth about Uber Driver, you know, the interesting thing was although we knew each other from the Boylston Chess Club, we never, like, got paired with each other more than once or twice. Like, and I played this weird random, like, that's kind of funny that I played this weird random um, rapid match. I don't remember how that came about. It was really kind of random. I never played a rapid match with anybody. And I randomly played this rapid chess match with, with Uber Driver. Um, Carlson Soth is only on the stream mostly on Tuesdays. But the funny thing is, I think I only played Uber Driver once or twice. I think he played the four pawns attack against me. Maybe. I have this feeling. He's only a part-time mascot. Yeah, he... We, we can't put him on full-time because we have to pay, like, health benefits then. So... We only see Carlson the Sloth, like, once a week. He's working at... He's working at Tesco the other six days. <laughs> but there's another... There's another bear who wants to come on board. My son is like really sweet. His favorite teddy bear never got to be on the stream or maybe just once. He is um, really attached to it. So he wants the bear to be on the stream once. Almost brought him on today. Alright, I mean, I give up. I hate this. This Bodler attack. It, all it is, is is basically like a weird sort of closed Sicilian. I mean... The Care Bears. It's not a Care Bear. What, um... What am I thinking about? No, Ponda was was my daughter's favorite stuffed animal. You know, so my son is kind of jealous, I think. Um of Ponda being the favorite. You know, there's a lot of sibling rivalry that goes into this sort of stuff. That's that's the problem. Let's try queen c7 first. It's all about sibling rivalry. I was lucky I was an only child, so I didn't have to deal with that. Mr. Coffee, you have siblings yourself? What happened? Did you, did you tire Arsenal fan out that he's not here? Or something? Did he jump off a pier? The highest rated bear. I didn't really have like a plushie that I attached myself to when I was a kid. I had a lot of like stuffed animals, but I didn't really make connection with any one in particular. Learning chess just... What is going on, man? What are you doing? He's just going completely berserk. Plushies. Almost like he's choosing his moves at random. I mean... 
at the end of the day, like learning chess is blitz rating is is like within a hundred points of Sumahair, but he's completely playing like he's a mad lunatic. The only one left. Wow. Acerbate. Dude, that's terrible. You lost your siblings. <laughs> you found out you had siblings as an adult. Oh. That's a little different. You don't have the attachment of growing up with them. Learning chess with the crazy random moves. Friday morning. All right, we're streaming till one thirty, approx, maybe one twenty. Pennsylvania was my parents. Pennsylvania. My name is Mr. Coffee. I'm from Pennsylvania. Western Pennsylvania. Dude, there's a crazy tactic here. Are you serious? You have to effing be kidding me. That is so bizarre, dude. That isn't even normal. Wow. Wow, that's just so weird, man. Knight g4, queen d4, and black has no, no winning move there. That is so bizarre. I'm up three pawns. There's no direct win. It's impossible. But that is seriously crazy. saw that in three seconds. I don't know, man, what this player's deal is. It's really weird. It almost feels like he's, like, trolling me when we play. Just trying to make up the weirdest thing you can like think of all the time. Could not concentrate fully. Like, look at the moose he finds. It's like he... 
He played the beginning like he was 800, and now he starts finding, like, master strength moves. Isn't that kind of weird? Like, you're purposely handicapping yourself in the beginning, and then you start playing seriously, or what? what is the deal with this account? It's just so weird. See, like, this is another move. Like, these moves don't, you know, they don't really gel with the other moves you played in the game. Can I win a piece here? King f8. It doesn't win a piece. He has, he, surprisingly, right, he has, he has saving moves no matter what I do in this position. Really surprising, isn't it? Um... He's suddenly like a tactical genius. Sees every amazing weird tactic, and instantly too, right? What is your deal? He is sus, like totally sus. Or it, they. It's like a troll account or something. I don't know what the deal is. Like, look at the beginning. The the ridiculousness of what White did here. I play bishop d6 and they just play d4, like, blundering their h-pawn with check. Then e5, just sacrificing a pawn for nothing. Then f4, sacrificing a third pawn for nothing. And then they find this move 92 and it doesn't lose because of the resource queen takes d4. And then they see this mate on the back rank here. Nothing suspicious about that whatsoever. I mean, I don't know, dude. I might just stop playing this account. I don't know what their deal is. It feels like they're trolling me. Resident Spectator played what? The bad moves or the great moves? Like, I don't know which is more surprising from this opponent. Their brilliancies or their blunders? Like, they're both weird. What I'm saying is, like, the inconsistency of their play is unbelievable. Look how perfectly placed White's pieces are. It feels like, yeah, very sus. I mean, then, then, then you've got the other aspect of the player that I, I think I'm not going to play them anymore. The fact that they're 0-21, yet they play these really amazing moves. If you're good enough to find the moves that you find, you would not be 0-21 against me. You would at least have, like, scored a draw or a win at some point. There's something really, really weird about it. Yeah, now he's battled back to an almost equal position. And that's like two minutes more than me. 
And now they just randomly gave me a rook. Dude, what is going on here? With this player. What is your deal, seriously? Mouse! Well, you just, like, pre-moved. Like, without thinking. That's just a... It's not a mouse slip. I mean, that's just like a... You just wanted to move real fast, so you hung your rook. Not the same as a mouse slip. Black is almost not that much better at the end. So rook takes b6, and he's only one pawn down. What is that analysis there? Okay. Every time I play this player, the game is just extremely strange and inconsistent. GM Sean. Yeah, conspiracy theories are rife here. GM Sean is 1 in 29. By the way, I don't know, you know, honestly, I mentioned this once before, but I think it's weird that Lee Chess leaves this feature up. Do you guys also agree with me? The the bottom of the board record feature, like, I don't need to re be reminded every time I freaking play somebody that I'm like 1 in 29 against them, in all honesty. Raise your hand if you think this is like a stupid ass feature and we should get rid of it, you know. This is like one of the early features probably that the developers thought was a cool idea, but it's really like no no real legit chess player gives a shit about that, to be honest. I think this needs to go. The the thirty and one record thing. It's just dumb, you know. And it's like it's it's horrible for the people it's horrible for the people that like have a 1 in 30 score. I don't need to be reminded I'm like 1 in 30 against this opponent. I probably already have been like smashed down by them, you know, a million times. I don't need that again. It's a dumb feature, get rid of it. End of story. It was just some random idea that one of the early developers, like the ball put in there or something. And it just, it's been around, but I wonder if anyone else has... Someone else must have made comments about it. It just seems dumb. I mean, it's kind of funny. Yeah, toggle it on or off, but don't make it like a default feature. I think it's stupid. Maybe have the option to put it if you want to, but it definitely shouldn't be a default. That's sort of stupid totally random we could just have like a news ticker at the bottom of the screen too stock ticker I don't know why, why not just put something else completely random I think I was complaining about yesterday what was it oh on the on the analysis boards the clocks are too small I couldn't find the clock. I was like, wait, I can't see it. I need my, my magnifying glasses. If you go over a game afterwards and it's a timed game and you want to analyze it, I mean, time is pretty important factor, you know? I mean, here the clock's nice and big, you can see it. But when you go over to analysis board, it'll show like a tiny little clock up in the corner. And um, you can hardly see it. I really need to get a pair of glasses. I think clock, you know, times are important. Much more important than the record, you know, whether I'm 1 in 29 against someone. Thanks, guys, for the, for the hype train last night. Cooking Rooks, gifting five subs. Dobry dien. Knight on G to E2. 7. 
Well, that was another funny thing about Uber driver. We both took Russian at Boston University. Like, what's the chances of that, right? Mr. Coffee? Who would have thought 32 years ago that Uber driver and I would... We just missed, you know, being in school at the same time, but... Actually, Morales also. So we now have, like, three Boston University grads in the... We have three Boston University grads in the stream. Uber driver, me, and Morales. have an alumni meeting. It's weird to play bishop c4 and then play bishop e5. But I almost didn't graduate because of Russian. I told the story before. We had like the same Russian professor at some point. An Uber driver and I both had the same stupid idea to take Russian because we were chess players. Dumbest thing I ever did. I could have studied Spanish and, and like learn, really learned a language. Instead, I wanted to like, not know, you know, now I, now I don't, now I know like four different languages badly or something. The very first ad for college received, yeah, they had a very strong marketing. Actually, that's probably one of the number one reasons why why I was attracted as well. I mean, Boston University had a very good, very good marketing program, but they had money and definitely. Uh, I was forbidden to go to school in Philadelphia. Agnes Karadusky, 125 bits. Yes. College fund. My grad school fund. Just watch a replay. Yeah, I had 2100 blitz, 2200 rapid. Say what? Really? Damn, Juicebox Wizard. You're that old? You took Latin? You mean... You, you took Latin in college? You know, my mom had, like, Latin in high school. In the old days, people used to take Latin in high school or something um, in ancient history. I don't remember, like, man, if, if Latin was even offered anywhere I've ever studied. Well, I've been to Disney World, Mr. Coffee. You must have had a big high school if they offered Latin, Juice Fox Wizard. Or you went to some fancy ass private school or something. My high school had like French, Spanish, Italian, and like German if you got on the short bus before school. To take German, you had to like take a bus to another high school like in the morning. Nobody wanted to do that. You basically had, um, you had like three options and no one took Italian. It was basically either French or Spanish. But I could have been good at Spanish. I, I had a good high school teacher and, and I was stupid not to continue it. One of the dumbest things I did. I, I have been to Romania many times, and um, it's interesting. If you studied Latin, you could learn Romanian. Well, you could learn any, any Latin language, but I think Romanian's interesting. You, um, you probably see the closest, I feel like it's probably the closest remaining, like, you know, world language to Latin. Pennsylvania Dutch as an elective. What is the base of Slavic languages? 
my Russian professor would have been able to tell you. The only thing I was good at in Russian was I was decent with the with the accent pronunciation. I just didn't put in the work. But I just don't think I think that people have, you know, natural talent for language, you know. Um I just don't. I am not I am not talented for languages. I'm not talented, period. I mean I only things I'm good at I I, I became good at by by working hard and being, you know, being um, devoted. I don't think that I'm particularly talented. Not like, not like you guys. Swiss, they speak Romance in Switzerland. Hungarian and Finnish are related. Yeah, it's uh, it's not Slavic, you know. I think it's like hung Hungaro Finn. It's like a separate thing. Agnes Karadzewski. I don't think it's considered Slavic or, or anything else. It's like a separate, alien. Language family. Man, F5. This is a serious problem. We have to take this. There are like similarities between words in Finnish and Hungarian or word parts. The tribe went one way to the north and another way to the Hungarian fields. The Huns split up at some point. Separation of tribes and state. It's funny though that Finnish is somehow related to Hungarian. They're like seemingly completely very different. That is surprising. Closely related, well, I don't know about that. We'll need a linguist. All right, thank you for the donation from Agnes Karadzewski. We got 125 bits, enough for a half a coffee here. I need another coffee. I haven't been to Starbucks in years. All right, we have to take, you're gonna sacrifice the exchange? I heard they've used like Hungarian as, as like alien language in sci-fi movies. I don't remember like which one. Because most people wouldn't recognize it. All right, for all of you that don't know, I live in Budapest, Hungary. Niles Starman, Bisonov Resonance, Spectator, Noob Jason. Noob Jason, you have to have 100 games. You're a little short there. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember now which movie it was that they used Hungarian as the alien language. Maybe more than one. Definition of specter. Disembodied spirit. 
I just joke, man. I know what a specter is. A hypnotic specter. Dungeons and Dragons had specters. A Christmas Carol has specters. Alright, D5. I just like joking with people's names. Don't take it personally. I came up with an improvement for my nickname for, for Elon Elon Musk. I called him Neon Mask, but I think it, <laughs> that doesn't really make sense that much. I want to call it... I want to call Elon Mask Nylon Mask. I think that sounds... That sounds funnier. I was calling him Neon Mask... But nylon mask is more amusing. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when I thought about it today. The mask part was easy, but it was like, when am I gonna when am I gonna call his first name? Look at this. Wait, bringing the sacrifices. Nylon sounds more, like, demeaning. It sounds, like, cheap, you know? Like, nylon. Nylon is sort of a artificial material. Neon isn't as demeaning. It's way better to call him Nylon Mask. And it sounds more like Elon anyway, so. Nylon it is. Nylon maskers. Look at that. Look at that. The tactical genius. You confused me there for a second. All right. GM Sean used his time, so kudos to him for using his time. A lot of people play too quickly. I think that that way playing inconsistently, though, this doesn't make sense. You know, it doesn't make sense to play bishop c4 and then play bishop b5. One or the other, but not both. You're losing valuable time there. Did I miss a maiden one? Jesus. Wait, where was my queen? It was on... It was on c4 and I didn't see queen f1 mate. Ouch. I was so focused on like taking on c1 that I completely missed it. Mr. Coffee, you know, many a blunder has been made by me in the morning. I don't... I don't really... see clearly. T-Romp. Is Musk officially... No, I don't think he is, man. He's like giving orders. Nylon Mask is like giving orders for people to work at twi Twitter from the office, but I mean, it's like the deal isn't even complete. How the hell can you like give orders when you haven't even officially bought something yet, you know? How does that work? That can't be legal. He just does everything he does to manipulate stuff. Like a month ago, he was. I, I told this on the stream. Maybe you were here at Juice Box Wizard. But. Nylon Mask was like ranting how, like, well, Butrin causes people to commit suicide. I mean, he had to have some motivation. Like, he wants to manipulate, like, pharma prices or something, you know? Everything he does is, like, some kind of. Some kind of way of trying to influence the market. People don't commit suicide because they're taking Wellbutrin. They might have an underlying problem, you know, in the first place, that they're 
predisposed to that kind of thing. But the cause and effect is all wrong. It's just totally absurd for this moron to be like giving psychiatric, you know, <laughs> advice to people on his Twitter channel. What a moron. Yeah, he needs to be banned from Twitter. God, not the Italian game. Why did I play E4, E5? Everything is just about money, you know, manipulating. Manipulating the market. It's so sick. The world is one big scam. We take challenges in order. I know that that's hard to believe. I can't believe the shit that Elon, you know, what's his name, Nylon Mask gets away with, though, you know? He managed to to drive down the price of <laughs> drive down the price of the company he's trying to buy before the deal is done with his idiotic tweets. That can't be legal, dude. The FEC or the FTC is um well actually the Securities and Exchange Commission, right? Is they can't seem to rein him in. I guess if you have billions of dollars you can just like get away with anything. We're at that point now. No one's been that rich before, I guess. You can literally get away with anything. The only thing that'll bring him down is maybe like a a sex scandal. He offered to buy the the airline stewardess a horse or something after propositioning her. There's that scandal. Alright, we're gonna stop talking about nylon mask now. It's distracting me. So what am I supposed to do here? Knight takes c3? What is this? You just castled. What is going on with this position? You're not supposed to just castle. So I take here. We had this before. You need 98 more games. No, it doesn't have to be rapid, just not bullet. It doesn't have to be rapid. The only thing is I don't count bullet as chess. So blitz is, is even blitz is acceptable. Have you read the Soviet chess primer? No. I don't remember ever seeing that title. I have a lot of books, most of them locked up in a storage unit I need to get rid of. I feel like I had this game already with a different opponent, and I failed to win it, I think. Wait, has some compensation. Summit on Sound might have even beaten me. Maybe I've had it more than once. It's some kind of weird, non-theoretical pawn sacrifice by White. He does have, like, the bishop pair that seems to give white a little bit of compensation. Well, I mean, you could do a lot worse than studying the old Soviet school of chess. I've, I've studied a lot, you know, through primarily the world champions like Botvinnik and Smyslav, and I've studied most of the, the great Soviet era players. I'm heavily influenced by Botvinnik, probably one of the most influential players on me. 
I was actually um, going over a game yesterday with one of my students, and uh, an interesting fact that I don't fully understand. Anybody here who is into chess history, one thing I don't understand is how Nimzovich and Botvinnik never played each other. Does anybody understand that? I mean, their careers actually kind of overlapped for a period of maybe almost 10 years in, in the 30s, the late 20s, and like early 30s. Bafinik was young, and, and Nizovich was toward the end of his career, but I still find it hard to believe, and I don't fully understand how it's possible that Nimzovich and Botvinnik never played each other. It's kind of strange. Yabatis was saying that Nimzovich moved to Denmark. I didn't realize that. In his, in his older years. He, he died young, by the way. He only lived to, like, less than 50. Um, but I didn't realize he had a connection to, to Denmark, necessarily. But it's weird. I guess Nimzovich just didn't play much in the last 10, 12 years of his life. But it's strange, you know. It wasn't a wartime. It was like between the world wars. Rook e3. It's a fantastic move. Seriously. What a fantastic idea. I just doubt it's sound, right? We should take here. You gotta give him credit, though. Extra credit for rookie three. Very creative move. Interesting way of defending the c3 pawn. <clears throat> no, nobody's here interested in, in chess history, particularly. But I, I thought, like, I'd find something online. You know, I, and I didn't really find anything about that. You know the one thing I'm noticing, which is interesting? With all of my opponents who are lower rated today, Everyone is like, everyone is kind of like, um, too, too aggressive. It's interesting. You think, like, if you're the lower rated player, when I'm a lower rated player, I'm, I'm, I'm probably more cautious against higher rated players, but it seems like the default is that everyone is like too aggressive. It's interesting. I think that in many cases I've been like too cautious when I play when I faced higher rated players. You're rated fifteen hundred. I'm rated twenty five hundred. I'd be like really kind of scared and and overly cautious in most cases. But all of my opponents are like too aggressive. Really, they're like sacrificing stuff. They're going crazy. The default style is like an over-the-top aggression. And I don't know why that is, necessarily. Because of bullet chess, like playing fast time controls, makes people play more like maniacs or something. Bullet... 400, you actually don't play more bullet than other time controls. Niles didn't go way over the top, you know. I mean, he, he sacrificed two pawns. But, like, no one is playing cautiously against me. I mean, I realize you gotta, it's good to be aggressive. But I feel like not too many people understand how to play, you know, safe, solid chess. I feel intimidated when I play higher rated players too. 
I think I'm more likely to play too cautiously because I've been beat down a lot, you know, and when you've been beat down a lot, I think you tend, you're like a kind of beaten dog. I mean, you tend to get, to get too cautious. Like against computers, I was, I was terrified of everything. I wouldn't do any tactics because I was terrified I would blunder a tactic. So I decided to stop playing engines at one point, like 15 years ago. Because it just like altered my style, you know, I was so afraid it would it would kill me tactically that I wouldn't do anything, you know, and it was just making the way I played different. Um, but I'm just just making a note, you know, that that it's interesting. Three opponents in a row, all of them have been like way too aggressive. Juice box. Mang is playing A4. What in the current tournament? What what time control was that? What are you speaking of? I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like all of my opponents are playing too recklessly. Against so and he lost. Good. I played A4, you know, when I'm on tilt. Blitz or rapid? Obviously, um... You can pretty much play anything in Blitz. But Magnus has a history of playing you know, offbeat openings pretty, pretty frequently. I talked about it yesterday. I mean, he's played the St. George, Leard, Aliakin with Knight G8, you know. He's pretty comfortable playing offbeat openings. More so than most. More than any other world champion in history. He's more childlike in that. Juicebox Wizard, you might be the only person in the world who knows wh who where is. <laughs> who is where? Juicebox Wizard apparently referencing this this name where. I don't even know who that is. Who the heck is where? Werewolf. What is a where? Who is a where? It sounds like a comedy skit. Where's <laughs> where's where? When is where? I don't know, man. No, dude. Fake news. Fake news. Juicebox heard it on Twitter. There might be an NBA player named Ware. It's gotta be fake news. Oh my god. Niles, the endgame. Genius. Jeez. Are you kidding me? You got that? I have to, I have to go here and get you out. Damn, dude. It sounds like something you read in the chat, you know, with a bunch of 8-year-olds. Someone had this theory. No, it's not clear to me who Ware is. It's some obscure chess player. 
But you can be forgiven for believing the rumors of eight-year-olds. You don't know any better. You're just an amateur chess player. Very naive. Now how do I win this? This is an, an impressive game by White, no? How do I win this? There you go, Mr. Coffee busted it in. Wow, he's actually from Rantum? Oh, where is the place in Massachusetts? So that's probably, you know, where Massachusetts? It's probably an old New England name, actually. You know that? That's interesting. He was born in Rentum, died in Boston. I should probably know the name then. I feel bad. No excuse. I guess the a7 pawn doesn't matter that much. I should have probably played b6. But what's your theory again? It's like something with Memorial Day? It's a salute to the American Memorial Day for Magnus Carlson. It's just a nylon mask conspiracy theory. All right. Impressive defense though by Niles. Tone it down in the early stages. You've obviously got good defensive skills. But, you know, you kind of did yourself in by playing overly aggressive in the early going. But given your defensive skills, you know, I would say you have good chances if you don't overdo it. Let the opponent come to you and play your, play your, your natural game, underdog. Uh-oh. All right. Nice try. Bisonov. Playing an unusual opening named after an American against an unusual American. If he's nine, he has potential. Americanism. Ware, Massachusetts. It must be an old New England name. Probably a lot of wares. It's a classic. Protestant New England name. Knight F3, B6. Wasp, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, like me. The wear. No, I should know as a as a fifteen year Boston. If I really knew as a fifteen year Boston resident, I should know who who wear was then. What's up, Arsenal? But he was really old. Our, uh, what did you say, Mr. Coffee? What was his... His date of birth? 1821 to 1890. That's a little bit before my time. So he was... 
he was around he was an old man when like Pillsbury was playing in Hastings or something like that a little bit before my time He makes Pillsbury look like a, a youth. The Hedgehog. I love the Hedgehog, but I don't play much. I don't play much Hedgehog. I'm out of practice. My Hedgehogs are a little bit out of practice. Knight C6 lines. <sighs> We've got two challenges Starman and Mule Skinner. Mule Skinner too fast, but maybe we'll do it if it's the last challenge. Hedgehogs. Any hedgehogs in the yard, Arsenal? I don't know if I've ever, like, seen a hedgehog in the wild. I don't... Maybe in the zoo only, you know, not, not in the wild. No, a wild hedgehog. Bishop g5, interesting. Okay. The hedgehog is your spirit animal. I thought the wild pig was your spirit animal. I think we had a wild pig on the stream once. Thanks everyone for tuning in. How did your match with Mr. Coffee go? You caught a hedgehog in a rack. They have quite the uh, geographical range. I always imagine Iraq is like all desert. You know, it's like these weird processions we have. What's the terrain like there, juice box? Is there, is there like a big mix? I mean, is it very diverse? It's these, like, misconceptions, I feel like. I think everything in the Middle East is like the desert. Iraq and Iran must have very diverse sort of, um, you know, environment. Right. Bison off getting main line with me in the hedgehog. But I think bishop g5 probably not as common as like knight g5. They usually go for some knight g5 to trade bishops. I gotta get my hedgehog in order. Armadillos are cool. Armadillo. The armadillo opening. Now, I, I gotta say, like, after three people played, like, Psychopaths against me, now we have Bisonov playing correctly, you know. He's like taking space, he's not going too far, he's not going crazy. He's playing for an edge, but he's playing, you know. 2028 means you don't play like a psycho, but you play for an edge. Very proper play by Bisonov. 
You go for an edge, but you don't go like a nutcase. E4 is controversial. So a lot of people don't like to play E4 in these type of positions because it becomes something of a target. I think um, lower risk, you know, not to play E4. Well, speaking of, yeah, I imagine Afghanistan's even more diverse than than Iraq. All right. Especially if you're a woman. Don't forget your hijab. E4. Well, rook c8 is standard, queen c7 is standard. I mean, I think like white would be maybe better off with like the queen on e2 and the knight on d4. Leaving the flag and spurs at home. Headed for the tribal area. I think I'll pass on the on the vacation in Iraq this summer. I wouldn't even go to Mexico, man. I'm such a sissy. I'm afraid to even go to like Bulgaria. Alright, B3. But I mean, we have like English football fans coming this weekend. So maybe I should get out of here. Seriously. We've got the friendly against England. No, it's not a friendly. Why am I saying it's a friendly? It's the Nations Cup or whatever. What is it called? England versus Hungary this week and tomorrow. Um, watch out for knight d5. There's these sacrificial ideas like knight to d5, but you would have to have another knight like ready to drop in on c6 if you do that. Yeah, there shouldn't be trouble then, Arsenal. The maximum that, that Hungary can do is like threaten to draw, I imagine. But I don't know what their state of play is. I haven't seen football. I haven't seen the Hungarian team play recently. I haven't heard much. I'm sure they won't pose a threat. Last year was pretty impressive, though. I can't imagine Hungary ever beating England. Like, they might hold them to a draw. No, I like Romania. I'm comfortable with Romania. That's as far as I'm going to go, you know, into the wild... Into the wild east. Denmark versus France. That'll be a good match. I highly recommend Romania. In fact, I'm probably going to go to Romania this summer. It looks highly likely. Sadly, um, our friend Danis is helping to organize a tournament coming up in a couple weeks in uh, Tergomuras. But I won't be able to go. He's, he's one of the organizers for a very strong open tournament in Romania in June, and sadly, I won't be attending. I would like to, but gotta work. Gotta make the donuts, Mr. Coffee. I will, I will probably go to Romania later in the summer.
But I'm concerned because I live downtown Budapest, like not that far from the stadium. So it'll be like a lot of crazies on the street tomorrow. I'm actually really close to the venue. I like Bisonov's play though. You know, he's he's playing solid chess here. This could be a problem. I've never seen anyone like maneuver knight d3 with the queen on d4. His queen has almost no squares. It looks like you're almost like trapping your own queen. e5, queen e3, knight g4, queen d2, and there's nothing special. I could trade the dark square bishops, which is positionally okay for me, but it would give up the d5 square. Nothing special. What am I doing? Chopping on g5 win b6. Say what? I want to go to Costa Rica. Have you been to Costa Rica? Juicebox, what about Panama? That sounds cool. I've seen people talking about Panama. It's probably like... Maybe it's better than Costa Rica. Costa Rica seems like overrated and they started... They started to say like there's a lot of crime and stuff. Especially if you're... If you're an American. But definitely, um, Panama and, and Belize sound cool. I'm running out of time. Whatever. It sounds like Budapest. Pickpockets and scammers. I guess I have to play b5. Dude, this is a funny position. Oh my god. The ambulance is on the way, guys. They're, they're, they don't care if your money is Canadian or American, man. You have to be very careful in Costa Rica or Panama or anywhere in South Central America. Even the United States, for that matter. I would, I would definitely take a money belt. And you don't want to show off that you're American. It also goes for the like train station here in Budapest. Good lord, man. Wow. fell for my subtle trap. It's so funny that you never moved your queen from d4, you know, and you walked into it, but but I think you can take on d6. No, you can or you can't. I just assumed there was something for me, but I didn't see it. Bishop d8 is like the best move, holy shit. I mean, I deserve credit for finding the best move with like 23 seconds left. It is like pretty subtle.
Bishop takes f6, seriously. Can never give that up. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you're right. Damn. I just blundered. I just straight up, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I have to take with the g-pawn, but you're right, yeah. I have to take with the g-pawn. Yeah, Arsenal's right. It was a mistake to allow that. I mean, I can play this position. I'm, I'm used to playing the Rouser, but he has knight there. You know, maybe bishop h3. Play for f4, f5. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I should allow this, this doubled pawns, and I can't sack the pawn. I cannot lose b6, for sure. Um, no, it was a mistake. Bill T T W A. Bill 2WK offered a gift sub to Juicebox. Back to tactics practice. It's funny that there's, yeah, 91, there's no games. There's only one random game here. Yeah, e4 is not, not usual. Isn't that like Shirov's wife or something? One of his wives? One of his harem? Alright. Starman is up next. I'm playing like Shirov's wife. Not bad. You reckon White could try playing getting play in the e-file? Yeah. Yeah, it's a rouser. The Richie Rouser. It's a Richie Rouser. Starman is new here. Say hi. He fits right in like everyone is in the 1900 club. But we're all David Bowie fans. How can you not be a David Bowie fan? Oh, there was a scene in in the first season of Stranger Things where they were talking about, like, it was the 80s, and one kid says to the other kid, like, would you rather be a Bowie fan or a Kenny Rogers fan? It was like, nobody, like, would ever have, like, asked that question. Kenny Rogers was not someone that you liked when you're like a kid. Maybe if you're like if you're like born in the in the forties or something. Nobody like sat around like debating whether they were a Bowie fan or a, a Kenny Rogers fan. That's not not, um, not a thing. There's not a lot of overlap between Kenny Rogers and David Bowie. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you like country music, you know, you're probably not into David Bowie. Don't think they were competing for listeners. I always hated country music. My neighbor's mom used to listen to it in the kitchen. It would drive me crazy. <clears throat> My family was not into country music. Originally he was a rock star, seriously? I know he had a chain of chicken restaurants at some point. 
the only thing I ever remember of Count Kenny Rogers was like the theme song to The Gambler or whatever. I mean, he's a legit musician, but I just don't see a debate between him and 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 Bowie being, you know, in the same discussion. The cool thing about Bowie was like the number of people he collaborated with and stuff. You know, he was so so open to collaborating with other artists which was cool you know and so open about like newer artists and not like arrogant i feel like it's like it's like great chess players you know they're egotists and they don't they want to they don't want to give credit usually to other artists other chess players it's rare that you know people are willing to collaborate if it's not not just about money it seemed like david bowie just loved music he just was really open minded collaborating with so many different artists. Drugs. How did drugs get into this discussion? All right, rookie one. I'm not getting involved in discussions about country music. I'm gonna abstain. No one was into drugs in the 70s and 80s. Juice Box was there. Unheard of. All right. What am I doing here? We have a good night on C5. This is a new opponent, Starman. Starman has a queenside majority. Don't mobilize your queenside majority. Please. I don't understand why he allowed me to like mess up his pawn structure. I didn't really talk about this game too much because it wasn't much going on. But this seems like a very strange decision to allow this. If I'm Magnus, it's game over. You know, that's like that's all you have to do, dude. If I saw this game a couple months ago, it was like some 2600 Borky Protoyevich against Magnus where Protoyevich like with white thought he could allow this structure he was done man that's enough that's game over dude if you allow that structure that structural rupture against the quality player and now we're talking Magnus you're done now you could get away with it against me probably I am more forgiving than Magnus. But I was impressed by Magnus's technique. Never been a Magnus fan, but you got to admit, man, his 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 endgame play is you know, his technical play is brutal. Having witnessed it firsthand. I'm so weird to like self fork myself. 
with rook d7. Alright. I don't really feel like queens matter here a lot. At least that we're on a nice friendly. You want to see Kamsky rattle the cage? Cage match. Got a Kamsky versus Ben Feingold. No holds barred. What do you guys think? Fight to the death. Kamsky, fine gold, cage match. Like gladiators. Size versus sheer stamina and endurance. Kamsky's not, he's, he's smaller, but he's younger. You know, Feingold has him out in a higher, you know, Feingold's in a higher weight division. It looks like Feingold is not the favorite. Gotta remember that Gata's dad was a boxer. Possibly they killed people but we can't believe every rumor that we hear no you gotta go with Kamsky not clear if his dad ever actually like taught him fighting skills you got the Kamsky mug in front of me Kamsky's 10 years younger. He's less likely to have a cardiac event. Um, man, I saw that Chicago Open list, dude. I felt kind of sorry for, for like, Feingold and... I mean, he, he and Shabalov and Dmitry Gurevich were the only, like, older players in the open section. Dimitri just like played three rounds and withdrew, which is really sad. Cause he's like, you know, he was a great player and, and way better than Feingold. But um but he doesn't play at all, you know, I imagine. Shabalov actually did quite well, which wasn't surprising. Shabalov stays fit and he's um an active player still. He actually finished in the top ten. It's just crazy though, like there's only kids. I mean, no, I was thinking about this. When I grew up, like there was all different age ranges playing, you know, in tournaments would be kids, adults, middle-aged people. It's, re it's, it's reached the point where like, chess tournaments are now like e-gaming. There's hardly anybody under the age of 40 in the open section. That's just, it feels like, it starts to feel like, and I've been there, you're playing in a scholastic tournament. I just don't like it, you know? I never played in scholastic tournaments when I was a kid. Shabalov is a huge fighter. He stays in good shape. He's got a dynamic style. You know, even if he's like a senior, he's he's only like... A little bit older than me. Actually, yeah, I mean, Shaba's just a few years older than me. Not much, you know. He's probably... Between Ben and I, we're all pretty close in age. 
Um, but I imagine Ben is the oldest. And then Shabalov and then me. Kamsky is like... Kamsky is like two years younger than me. But I was just looking at the list and it's just... It's unbelievable, you know? That like everyone has quit chess or doesn't play. Dimitri withdrew after three rounds. Feingold had a, a terrible tournament, of course. Because he's just... You know, it's hard to compete with all these like kids. His rating has dropped down. I mean, FIDE ratings are a nightmare. Feingold's down to like 2400. Welcome to the club, dude. I mean, you can't maintain a FIDE rating of a Grandmaster level if you're playing on a regular basis. All the, all the players I know have lost their 2500 ratings or formerly 2500. You can't go to tournaments and you're just like playing 1900s who play like 2200s every single game. Yeah, maybe someday, Asturbate. I'd rather battle Fungal than Shabalov. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. All right, Tapala still plays okay, but Tapala's also younger, no? I don't know, I, I assume Tapala was younger than me. I'm not familiar with his exact age. Never really thought about it, to be honest. But I'm just saying, like, I'm... Number one, like, the FIDE ratings are all messed up. Number two, I don't want to play in tournaments where it's just kids and no adults. It's, like, depressing. It's not that I hate kids, but, I mean, I don't want to be, like, the only person over 40 in the chess tournament, you know, at that point, I'm just done. It's no longer like, it no longer feels like a real chess tournament to me. That's just weird. That's the way the tournaments are. The Chicago Open was like 200 players in the open section and like 90% of them were under the age of 20. You know, or under the age of 25. I don't know. Let's say under the age of 25. Definitely under the age of 30. I'm certain that 90% of the players in the open section were under the age of 30. It's ridiculous. People who are 40 are like ancient. Where are the players that used to play? You know, where did they go? They just like disappeared. There was like one guy, like I recognize some 2200 master, I think Steve Slipiziak or something, who's probably like 60. So like one former master. Where are all the people that used to play? It's so depressing. They just got beat down by 1900 kids and they don't want to play anymore. This can't be right. What am I doing here? How do I win this position? Do I have something? It's getting crazy. Like, we got everything in the quadrant here. It's too congested. Arsenal fan only approves of psychoaggressive macho players. He's he's like the action movie. The action movie chess fan. Wait, Arsenal fan, you like action movies too, right? 
if Rambo was a chess player, Arsenal fan would be like his number one supporter. <laughs> it's totally true. It's totally true. You're such a, a action an action movie chess fan. What am I doing here? My god. This is so weird. I'm missing something obvious. Knight e4? Knight d4? Weird hallucinations. What am I doing, man? Good morning, good and Kurt, long time no see. I'm not a, an action an action figure fan. I appreciate the action movies, but I don't really don't really Yeah, well all the great players have a good ability to grind, right? It's kind of mandatory. My big idea was what? Like knight d3 check? Oh, this is so weird. God. My big idea was rook e3, which is a really weird idea. Rook e3. Hero worship. Oh no. My tactical sensors are just not activated in the morning. I can't play. I can't calculate. steak sandwiches. In what part of the states do they call steak sandwiches grinders? That's the important question. Nice job, Arsenal. Yeah, the begging. They were begging again, right? They sent me a private message, too. It's like, dude, stop. Nice job. Stretch Armstrong. The grinder is a jersey in New York PA. So any sub can technically be called a grinder. That's what I was wondering. I thought it was New York, New Jersey. kind of thing. We managed to act like separate him from one of his pawns, <laughs> but it wasn't easy. Now I'm out on the side of the board with this knight. Don't feel that's like the right move. What other move is there? It's the only move. Well, it's not the only move, but I mean, what am I supposed to do otherwise? Grinders near me. <laughs> yeah, the term is totally overused. Everybody's got that in, oh, 
grinding to 2700. Most overused, like, Twitch terminology. The overextended nugget. But that is a dating app, right? That's why he was joking about it. So it's funny, like, rook g1, rook b2, and you can't defend your pawns. That is, like, a gay dating app, right? I thought, I don't know, I wouldn't know. But, you know, you hear things. We don't talk about sex on stream. We had to time out Bob for that yesterday. Wade is like losing all their nuggets now. Dating is subjective. Chess is subjective. That's a good point, WJ Loof. What is dating anyway? It's such a weird word. Does almost mate count for anything? It's a risky thing to do. Almost losing on time. How much increment do we have here? Five sex? I said it again. Can't help myself. It's all I think about. Seriously, what are we gonna do? Where's the mate? All I talk about is mate and sex. I feel like Emery Tate. What is the stream anyway? God has left the chat. It's a Zex, Zex chat. There's no mate. <laughs> Smothered mate. No easy way to finish him off here. All the sexual innuendos aside, um, oh, he's trading. Yes. Bring on the increment. This is an increment game. Starman is not playing increments. Increment is game over. That's why we play with increments. So the clock doesn't decide the game. The game decides the game. The position decides the game. Seriously. I don't want the game to be decided by time. You know what I mean? Not big on resigning. He might like squeak out over there on the other side. We gotta be careful. I don't want him escaping. All right. 
Oh no, that's that's the crazy. All right. What do we got? One more game. Bring it on. One more game. Bring it on. No stupid time controls. No people have been banned by, by me or anyone else. Resident Spectator Mule Skinner. Alright, Mule Skinner. Every time I try to promote the Fortnites, I stalemate them, dude. It happened twice on stream. You deserve that, though, you know? I just... You deserve it. I mean, just don't stoop to their level. Seriously. I always, like, smile. I always stalemate people. This is last game. No Grand Prix attack. Uh Sorry I played C5. I apologize. Grandpa Spasky. I'm sorry, I can't think of Spasky in a sexual way. What is Spasky like, 80? Oh, we had the same game. I can't even remember what I did two days ago. Unbelievable. I had a new move. Wait. We're always ready to, with a new theoretical novelty. No resident specter, but your challenge disappeared. The problem is that a lot of people challenges mill skinners as well. Like they just like disappear. I guess your your internet or the um, the site. I don't know your connection to Lee Chess. The problem is for moment momentary. Um, like mill skinners disappeared as well for a while. So I just take whatever the first one is on the list when I get there. Um, we're not like, you know, trying to block anybody. I looked at this with the engine. The computer is, um, yeah, the computer is fond of this line. But not only the engine, um, it's been played in correspondence games. This is the best continuation according to Stockfish and Correspondence Theory. See you Sunday. Wow, Spassky had 85. Okay, I didn't see anybody like reference that. You'd think like someone, one of my chess player friends, they would like just randomly, you know, these weird chess pages would post like Spassky's birthday, 85. It's kind of a big deal to be the like oldest living world champion. It's like being the oldest living president or something. You would think like I would have noticed. Huh. Spassky's 85. Impressive. He's um he's around the same age as Portish, I guess. They're probably very close. Portish is still hanging in there doesn't play anymore. Sadly, um, I played Portish's team in the Hungarian team championship, his former team. It used to be like Portish and Benko, but they don't play. I mean, Benko has passed away, but Portish stopped playing a few years ago. Wow. Theoretical novelty. C3. So all the games in in my researches were E5. And then black, you know, because this pawn is hanging, black plays F6. White takes an F6, and you take with a bishop. It's just a really kind of weird position. Neil Skinner with a new move, C3. Why does nobody play C3?
I would think I'd just take on e4 and open up the game. There was an interesting idea, though, with this whole this whole line. There were some cases where black plays bishop g4, and tries to control the dark squares, I guess, essentially. Jimmy Carter. Damn, dude. What? Yeah, Uber Driver, was I surprised? No. No, he was who I thought he was at first. He was my number one candidate. But he kind of denied it early on. You know, I think, like, my first guess was his true identity. And Uber Driver weaseled his way out of, like, saying I didn't really guess him or, you know... I was pretty open about it. He was one of my, if not my primary guess. So he was kind of misleading, you know. I had basically eliminated his true identity because I thought he denied it. But he was who I thought he was. He's a good guy. Um, Uber Driver is a player who actually I played a blindfold match against at the Boylston Chess Club. We only played once or twice, I don't remember, um, like, slow games, Arsenal. It's interesting. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy the Greek. This is crazy. I shouldn't do this, but anyway, further confirmation that Uber Driver's a good guy. You know, I was, like, hoping he wasn't someone I, like, hated or something, <laughs> you know? He was a good guy. He is a good guy. He is a good guy. Not a lot of good guys out there. Um, yeah, I was afraid Uber Driver might be someone I didn't particularly like. But you can tell by his personality on the stream that he's he's a good guy. The question was really, was was he a national master? Because he's awfully close to national master strength. And the truth is that I think that Uber Driver never, never got national master, which is actually kind of surprising, because it seems like he could have and should have, but I don't know what his story was. When I knew him, he was like 2100 USCF, and he was young, a little older than me. He could have easily made it to national master, but I guess he just like worked and didn't play enough. He should have been, could have been a national master with hard work. Knight G3. That's our, that's our Uber driver update. Wow. I didn't realize Carter was a brewer. Peanut beer. I don't like knight g3. He should he should probably think about taking this. Maybe I'm wrong. The bishop on e4 is driving me nuts though. Wow. What a strong piece. What a strong piece. I can't wait for the British football fans to get pissed outside my 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 house. I'm going to come home at like, no, tonight won't be a problem. It'll be tomorrow night. That'll be a problem. Don't know what to do here. I, I don't, I don't allow you to play F5. No. I don't care if my bishop is a prisoner. I am not allowing f5. You will not play f5. Maybe this is a bad move. I don't care. f5 is disallowed.
Yeah, my British accent needs some work. It's better if I'm drunk, probably. I need to watch more British TV. Practice. I apologize for the bad accent. It's the morning and I haven't been drinking. And I just really need to practice more. I was never very good at at accents anyway. British one is the only one I can do. So tonight I'm going out. Saturday is the football match. Saturday night will be the problem. But they will go to a different district for the most part. I don't really live in the party district. We have like a party district in Budapest where all the the foreign tourists go to drink and get wasted. I'm actually pretty close, but, but not close enough where it's an issue. Walking distance. But it's important for our economy because we don't produce anything you know, but stag parties, really. What does Hungary produce? Paprika and stag parties? Without the tourism ministry, we're in trouble here. He played Queen F3. major exporter of 2700 chess players yeah right not enough of those to go around I don't know what's going on with the latest with with the Rapport scandal but there's this really weird guy who's president of the Hungarian Chess Federation and and he like he sent off a letter to Viktor Orban It's really funny because the the Chess Federation's president is Sabo Laszlo, who's like the most legendary, you know, Hungarian grandmaster of all time, by the way. You know, justifiably or not, um, I feel like Sabo Laszlo is the most famous for some reason. Even though, like, Portish was probably greater, and uh, Marazzi was also extremely famous. It's just funny that it's a, it's just an extremely common name. Saba was a great player. I still would, personally, I prefer Portish. Different generation slightly. It's just ironic that the, the president of the Hungarian Chess Federation is named Sabo Laszlo. The first division of Hungarian team championship is the is the Sabo Laszlo division. But it's spelled with an S Arsenal. Yeah, S C. Anyway, he was complaining to Viktor Orban. Because Orban cares so much about chess. Right? Chess is very important to Fides. In the past, like all they cared about was like building football stadiums. Now, supposedly, Orban cares about chess. It's like, yeah, right.
we export 27 our players, not enough of them. It's been a very long dry spell between like Peter Leko and Rockport in the Hungarian chess scene, man. To be honest, I think that's why people are pretty upset about it. We had Hungary had to wait like literally after having tons of grandmasters, none of them reached the top 10. Almashi was there, but not quite. You know what I mean? Like Zoltan never quite made the top 10. And so since Leiko, you know, Rockport's the first one. But to be honest, like, he was never that supported by the Hungarian Chess Federation. He, he, they did it on their own. I mean, I guess the Hungarian Chess Federation helped, but... Practically, I, I've always said, Rockport came from a wealthy family, and, and his father has supported them, and... I wouldn't really give the Hungarian Chess Federation too much credit for Rockport's success, to be honest. They can't take credit for his success, really. The Mule Skinner, the man, the myth, the legend. 269 games, this is game 270. Yeah, the US is a major importer of 2700 players, exactly. I'm surprised Robert doesn't go to the United States. So it turns out, you know, his wife is Serbian. I didn't, I don't know exactly the situation, but apparently the, the sponsor who wants to, he wants, that wants to pay for Rapport to go to Romania is Serbian and Romanian or some kind of hybrid thing going on there. So I'm not sure exactly what the deal is. But there may be a Serbian element. Got the knight on g3, for Christ's sake. The knight on g3, I traded it off for my knight on h6. I'm like shameful, it's shameful. What a solid game by this guy. The shame. Who's calling Caruana imported? What are you talking about? That's absurd. Nobody, nobody who knows anything. Anyone who's an expert on where should know what they're talking about. <laughs> no one who knows what they're talking about would, would say such a thing. Again, you're in the eight-year-old, the world of eight-year-old chess pundits, probably. Man, it's an amazing game by Mule Skinner. He played fantastically. Mule Skinner like blunders and loses all of his like tournament games against seventeen hundreds, but against me he plays like a master. What's that about? That's it. Take the draw. Don't be stupid and, and try to win.
So is totally imported. Okay, he's a Filipino player. And then when you when you talk about players like Kamsky and Shabalov, you know these are players that are imported, but they're not imported. I mean they 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 emigrated to the United States to get away from the former Soviet Union. But Kamsky and Shabalov, you know, they spent twenty years in the United States. So they're more American than, than anything else. I feel like you have to earn your you have to earn your uh your residency or whatever. But there's a lot of people who, who are trying to say that like Ducarawana is not from another country. He got like Italian citizenship because if you if your grandparents are from Italy or something, he has no, you know, he was born in the United States. Hikaru, maybe, maybe his father's Japanese. Maybe he was born in Japan, but he lived his whole life in the United States. I don't know, those players like Kamsky and Shaba who came when they were like 18 or 20, um, you know, What you consider them? Yeah, Carolina from Miami. He's totally American. He always was. All right, guys. If you you know if you have like distant relatives who are I Italian, you can claim Italian citizenship. It's it's a it's a rule there. It's very easy for for people. Carolina was born in Italy. Arsenal fan, I I never heard that before. You're the first person I've ever seen who said that Caruana was born in Italy and he moved to the US as a kid. I would think I'm gonna bet Arsenal I'm 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 betting Arsenal's wrong. I'll bet you five dollars. I'll bet you I'll bet five dollars Arsenal is wrong. I'm not going to put a lot of money on it, but I've, I think I would have heard that before. You would think, like, at some point I would have heard that. You're confusing Caruana with Nakamura. It's like Arsenal's opening. It's like Arsenal's uh, opening theory sometimes. He's confusing positions. All right, we'll bet $5 or a beer on it. I'll talk to you guys later. We'll do some research. And um I like I like Arsenal said he moved when he was like 7. I have a student who played Caruana in like the Nationals when he was like 7 or something like that. <laughs> I'll see you later, guys. Nice, nice. Thanks for the beer. Take care, guys. See you Sunday for the Simul. Bye-bye.